Okay, so in the last video, I talked about the physical generalized least squares method or FGLS method where this function hx is unknown and we have to estimate it. And in the previous video, I talked about one method of uh, estimating this uh, function hx. In this video, I'm going to show you an example in R where we will be estimating uh, this hx function and using it in the weighted least squares. And I'm going to use this data set smoke for this example. And here, our dependent variable is the number of cigarettes smoked per day. And our explanatory variables are annual income, the per pack price of cigarette, the year of schooling, the age measured in years, and the square of uh, age. And this variable, it's a binary variable, a dummy variable. It shows a value of 1 if the person lives in a state where uh, restaurants smoking restrictions apply. So this variable captures the idea that uh, there may be restrictions on uh, smoking in a restaurant. So let's uh, follow the five steps that we learned in the previous video on uh, this data set and get the results. So in the first step, I'm going to regress the model in the usual way. So let's uh, look at the bruish pagan test and uh, test for the existence of heteroscedasticity in the model. And the p-value here is very, very low, which is a strong evidence of heteroscedasticity in the model. So there is heteroscedasticity in the model and we do not know which of these variables are causing this uh, heteroscedasticity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the residuals from uh, the step one using this reset function and then I'm going to take the square of uh, these uh, residuals and take the log of uh, the square residuals and save them as log of u hat squares. In step 3, I'm going to regress these uh, squares of residuals on uh, all the explanatory variables in the model. We do not know which of these variables are causing heteroscedasticity in these residuals, so we are estimating our residuals on all of these uh, explanatory variables. And then, in the next step, I'm going to get the fitted values of these residuals from uh, this model. In the fourth step, because we took the log of uh, these uh, you had, I am reverting back these uh, residuals on the original scale by taking the exponent of uh, these uh, fitted residuals. Right, so everything is ready now. All we have to do is uh, create the weights. Weights in the FGLS is 1 over h of x. So let's uh, create these weights. And now, finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to regress my original model, the same model that I started with in step one, and I'm going to use the weights that I created here in this weighted least squares estimate. So let's do that. Okay, so we have two models now. Our first model is the usual model, and uh, our second model is FGLS model. So let's uh, look at the results of both of these models. So let's look at the OLS first. In the OLS, neither income nor cigarette price are statistically significant. And their impact is also small. Education has a statistically significant impact on uh, the number of cigarettes smoked per day. In fact, each additional year of education reduces cigarettes smoked per day by one half of a cigarette. And similarly, age has a quadratic effect. That is, cigarette smoking increases with age with a decreasing rate. And similarly, when there are restrictions on smoking in restaurants, it decreases cigarette smoking by almost three cigarettes per day on average. So these were the results from the ordinary least squares method. So now look at uh, the FGLS. So see in the FGLS, log income, it has a positive and statistically significant impact on uh, cigarette smoking per day. That is, as income increases, the number of cigarettes smoked per day increases as well. And the impact is also large. Cigarette price, it has larger impact as compared with the OLS, but this impact is statistically insignificant. So from both uh, OLS and FGLS, 
we can conclude that cigarette smoking is negatively related to schooling. There is a quadratic functional relationship between age and uh, cigarette smoking per day and uh, education has a negative and statistically significant impact on uh, cigarette smoking per day. Restrictions on uh, smoking in restaurants also has a negative and statistically significant impact on cigarette smoking per day. So this is how you use FGLS to estimate a model with heteroscedasticity and correct for this heteroscedasticity by estimating the weights from the model. And remember, I used one specific uh, functional form here in step three, but there are other functional forms or other ways of uh, estimating these log of u hat squares as well. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.